Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Alto Gafool. This is the brand new Mercedes CLA shooting brake. It's wider, it's longer, and it's lower. But is it any better? Let's take a closer look and find out. CLA shooting brake has been dividing opinion ever since its first appearance in 2015. Why? Well, it's a five-door coupe-style car. And that's not everybody's cup of tea. It presents as quite a vi visually challenging combination of different factors. But it is very, very stylized. And for that reason, I think of all of Mercedes models, this one draws the most interest from designers of almost all of the cars on offer. So what's changed with this model? Well, I can tell you that we are now 53 millimeters wider. So what is that for Imperial guys? It's about that. But we are also two millimeters lower, and that is only about that much but you can really see the impact that it's had on the design of this car. Now, I once heard a designer say, and you get extra bonus points if you can tell me which designer it was, because I did mention it in a clip, that if you like the design of a car, you should take away one design line and then see how it looks. And that is something that they have tried to emulate with the design of the shooting brake. It's supposed to be a very pure, very design-based structure aesthetically and the way that it communicates right from the front is clearly designed to draw opinion and controversy from the second you see this car there are lots of things that jar a little bit according to conventional car design but they also add up to something that's really rather special and unique the way that the car looks now is very much more elongated across the front that lower height even though it's only two millimeters, makes a really significant difference to the way that this car punches at you. It's often described as having a shark nose, and the reason is pretty self-evident. The big logo here that features all of the sensors integrated into it really punctuates the front of this grille, that traditional Mercedes star design, but the lower third of this car is all muscle. What do you think? Does it work? As we come slightly higher up the design, I think we start to get a sense of exactly why this car is so popular with designers. You can see that so much care and attention has been put into the detail of how this car visually presents. Look at the way these headlights cut into the side and they match so beautifully this line of the bonnet coming right up and right into the wing. Every detail here is really thought through. Now, as I said right at the top, that is clearly an opinion divider. Lots of people do not like the shooting brake design, but for those that do, they absolutely love it. And I, for one, am really pleased to see that a little less design has been put in, that they've removed some of those elements that makes it more pure in form. After all, if you're gonna divide opinion, go big or go home. There's nothing here that is in any way vanilla. You're either gonna love the way this sculptural design works, and just look at this detail here. Look at the way that that cuts straight into the wheel arch. It's so aggressive, but so precise, and really does accentuate the way that the wheel works within the arch. This is a purely styled car. You're either gonna love it or you hate it, but there is an awful lot to admire either way. The CLA is now 48 millimeters longer, and in conjunction with that decreased height ride of two millimeters, what you can see is that really does increase the sportiness of the feel. Now, it's not only that. Remember when I said, if you like the character lines, maybe you should remove one? Well, that is what has happened at the shoulder height. Gone is this defining shoulder height line right throughout the body and what you have is just a feeling of almost swell as we get through the car to the coupe line right at the rear meeting up with this stylish accentuation of the rear light right at the back so there is no more defining feature of a shooting brake than the side profile this speaks to people
it either infuriates them or drives them wild with desire. So, let me be honest, if you didn't like the shooting brake to begin with, I'm really keen to see if this has changed your mind, but more important, if you are a fan and a devotee of this style of car, I am really keen to know if you like the way that this has changed. For me, if I stand back from it and drink it all in in one, I think the aesthetic has been significantly improved. Yes, you could argue it's a little bit more bulbous in its rear third. It doesn't quite have that classic drop-down draggy coupe line, but it looks a whole lot more distinct. The problem I always had with the shooting brake is that it just didn't ever look terribly practical. This looks like a car that mean, means business. It has a nice way of referring to muscle cars from the 60s while still retaining a very modern characteristic. So, it might not be my pick of all the cars I could have, but I really admire the way that the style has been applied to this vehicle. But what do you think? Now, this for me is the real story of success of this car. Why? Well, practicality is a very important issue and one of the reasons I have always always dislike the shooting brake is the fact that the boot was almost laughable and unusable. Well, guess what? It's now been increased by 53 millimeters in load width. That's about that. Now, that might not seem like an awful lot of room, but trust me, when you're trying to get stuff in the back of here, it makes all the difference in the world. As you can see, we now can reasonably access this and get what we want in. And it's got a pretty decent size as well. You could comfortably fit suitcases back here and more than enough for a nice weekend away. We lift up the cover. We can see that we've even got a little bit of space and storage below as well. Nice spot for some tools or some extras that you might want to carry around. So, I have to take my hat off to the designers. For my money, and it is personal taste, I think that they've kept alive the vision, the idea, the aesthetic of the shooting brake, but they have increased the practical usage of this vehicle so much. This is now realistically a vehicle that I could envisage using. And before, I just couldn't be convinced. But what about you? Let's take a look and see what's powering this thing. Okay, so in due course, there are going to be an awful lot of choices between manuals, automatics, petrol, diesel, and who knows what else powering. But at the moment, we have only the top engine to look at. That is a four-cylinder CLA 250, two-litre petrol engine producing 225 horsepower, 350 newton meters of torque, front-wheel drive, seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox, and it will give you an efficiency well, they claim, of six and a half litres for every 100 kilometres driven. Now, I'm not quite sure about that, but I have to tell you, I think that's a really nice engine pairing. It delivers a really good compromise between power and performance and efficiency. For my taste, I like the front-wheel drive choice for this car. I think it's right. I think it fits the style, and I think it fits the expected performance as well. So there are going to be a lot of different ways to have this car in keeping with the design elements, you can have it your way. But this is gonna be my primary pick, and I think it's gonna take more than a little bit to sway me off that, but I can't wait to find out. Let's take a look inside and see what's different in there. Well, from the moment that you open the door, these frameless windows really tell you that this is the shooting brake. And from the second that you take a glance in the interior, everything in there reinforces that idea. So there's nothing in here that should blow your mind or really set this apart from a lot of other cars, but it's the individual stylistic details that add up together to let you know exactly what car you're sitting in. And you can even see that the moment that you stare at the door. It's just the way that things are laid out and it's the attention to detail. Just look at the way 
that this detail has been carried out with this aluminium effect right here. There's something distinctly human about this curve and I see a lot of that reflected in a lot of the other design details. Of all of the lineup, I honestly feel that this is the car where the designer said, you know what, we are only going to make this for people who love this model. If it's not for you, that's fine. We have other cars for that. But we really are going to put exactly what we like by way of expression into this vehicle. And for me, that resonates through every single area of this car. Now, in case you think I'm being a super fanboy and I'm only saying super nice things about this car, I must come clean. I am personally not a shooting brake fan. This is not my style of car, but I absolutely love the amount of design that's gone into it. Let's take a seat inside and see how it feels. Stylistically, there is a whole lot to like here. Everything about this from the individual details, look how much attention has been paid to the way that that air vent is integrated. That is really very special. You won't find that screen integrated in quite that way in any other car. And even these air vents, okay, it's my old worst enemy piano black, but this is a very particular layout and I like it. It's very unique just for this car. So when I think of a shooting brake, I think only, okay, I'm going to compare this car with other shooting brakes, not with other cars. Because in terms of practicality, let's be honest, there are better cars. In terms of sports performance, let's be honest, there are better cars. And in terms of pure emotional design, let's be honest, there are better cars. But in terms of originality and flair and being able to pull up outside somebody's house where they haven't seen 7,000 of that car before and where you're driving something that's just practical enough, just fast enough, just exciting enough, I think you'd have to think for a long time before you found something that could punch above this weight. In keeping with the styling of the car, a lot of details have been carried over from other lines that really reinforce the idea that styling is key. What do I mean by that? Well, there are 64 ambient lighting modes. Okay, that's not a new idea, and E-Class had that two years ago. But there are 10 colour worlds and 3 colour zones for this car. So the ideal customer for this is clearly somebody who really wants everything exactly the way that they like it and I think that's important because as I said earlier on what I like about this car is the fact that it is completely uniquely styled so it's imperative that if you're a customer for this vehicle that you can have it exactly the way that you feel expresses you because this is a very individualistic car. Now coming on to that if we look at the choice of materials and the finish it's all exactly of the quality that you would like. Now, you know I'm not the world's biggest fan of this piano black, but I love these air vents. Look at those. They're such a nice design feature and they feel great to use. Down here, we have a full range of features that we're more than familiar with. They're very easy to identify by touch without needing to look at them. And this is getting to be quite a familiar sight in terms of how Mercedes are integrating their center console into use and Two cup holders here, charge points here, USB-C, 12 volt and an inductive charging pad. So nothing there to blow your mind and I'm happy to see that we haven't gone crazy on redesigning the Mercedes interface. Ah, Thomas, it's our old friend, the Mercedes, asking us once again what it is it can do for us. Well, I have to say Mercedes, if your cars are as helpful as you are, then I think that speaks well to your dealer network. Let's take a look in the back and find out if it's going to work for us. Well, aesthetically right from the start, I think you'd have to agree that is very nicely finished. Stylish, not overblown, nicely understated and really in keeping with the rest of the car. But is it comfortable or practical? Well, I'm going to take a seat. A lot of attention has been paid with the increased dimensions of this car into making the back of it a lot more usable and it really shows. So again, 5 foot 10, 178 centimeters. And for the first time ever in a shooting brake, I have more than enough headroom. Have a look at this. I have a full two inches above my head. So this car is going to work for anyone up to about 6'2", I would say. And in terms of legroom, look at this. So 
This car seat was quite far forwards when I tested, so realistically, I think you can say that I have at least an inch of spare space here. And I've known a lot bigger cars than this with a lot less comfort back here. So this car is immensely comfortable for two rear seat passengers. I say two, obviously you can fit three, but honestly, I just don't know how much fun you would have sitting in the middle. It works, but it's a short trip feature only. How about comfort back here? Well, we have our own heating and cooling vents, and although they're not quite as nicely finished as the one in the front, they are very tactile and very pleasant to use. We do have two USB-C charge points. Again, I have to give credit to Mercedes for not only future-proofing their cars somewhat in regards to this, but also understanding that there are usually two passengers in the back when you have them, and it's nice that they both have a charging solution. Rear seats here, well, I guess I could have done with a bit more design detail. It is very flat and plain. I like the cargo net. I guess, after all, we can have passengers back here, but the primary experience and desire of this car is in the front. So, although I feel pretty good sitting back here, and I do feel as if I've been respected, and I do feel as if I have as much room as I could ever reasonably want or expect in a shooting brake, I just want to drive it. So let's sum up the CLA shooting brake. Well, for me, it's a huge triumph. But I say that as a very skeptical observer. Bear in mind, I was not a massive fan of the predecessor, but I really like to see how this car has evolved. Hasn't been around that long. 2015, bear in mind, was the first ever iteration of this car. Now, I am a bit concerned. If you're in love with that styling, maybe this is a little step too far for you. So I'm very keen to hear what you have to say about that. For me, it takes all of the elements of design. It enhances them slightly. It removes some of the things that were a little bit too defining for my taste, and it adds a huge amount of practical functionality to this car. What will it deliver at price point? Well, we're gonna to have to wait a little bit longer for that information. But in the meantime, I think this represents a fantastic compromise between form and function. It's still every bit as much of a designer's car as its predecessor, but, it's now just that much more usable. What do you think? If you have any comments or questions about anything that we've mentioned here in the review, or more importantly, haven't mentioned, please pop them below. I hope you've enjoyed watching as much as we have enjoyed seeing this, and we hope we'll see you again soon.